Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope your Saturday is going great and that you'll have a fabulous rest of the weekend. Today's video is going to be a men's shirt transformation video and I thrifted this beautiful baby blue men's shirt. I think I got it for about $2 and I decided to turn it into this beautiful keyhole crop top. I really love how this turned out. I think the tie detail at the top is fabulous. It looks so good and it's going to look amazing with whatever you decide to rock this with, whether you wear it with high-waisted jeans, low-waisted jeans if that's more your cup of tea, or a skirt, whatever you decide to rock this with, I promise you you're going to look fabulous and it's super easy to make. It's just a bit time consuming which is always the case with some DIYs so in case you don't mind investing some good old time and some effort let's get into making your fabulous keyhole crop top so my shirts always come with a curved edge and I always have to get rid of it because I like working with a straight edge so all I did was I drew a straight line with a ruler and cut that bit of fabric off now moving on to marking the length of my shirt I decided 25 centimeters was ideal for me in hindsight I should have probably made it longer because my shirt ended up being way shorter than I wanted so in case you want more length to your top just make sure you add some inches or centimeters to it and you'll be good to go moving on to the sleeves all I'm doing is I'm taking the sleeves of the shirt and I'm just going to draw a straight line across at the top I wanted my sleeve length to be about six inches you can make it longer if you want you can make it shorter and I marked my six inches with a piece of chalk draw a straight line across and decided to cut off my sleeve I went in with about an inch of seam allowance later because I did not want this to be too short and after I'd added in my seam allowance I just cut off the excess fabric off and I had one sleeve now we're going to make a second sleeve and we're just going to use the first one as a template. So I just placed it on top of the other sleeve of the shirt and just cut off the shape to get another sleeve. In the end you're going to have two sleeves for your two arms. If you have three arms then find a third sleeve. It's okay, no one's judging you. And now moving on to getting a strip of fabric. I made mine 1.5 inches. This is going to be the strip of fabric that goes at the top that you're going to tie at the top. You can make it as wide as you like but I wanted mine to look like string so I decided a width of 1.5 inches worked fine for me but definitely feel free to make it bigger, to make it smaller. It's all a matter of what you want. It's your DIY so do whatever the heck you want with it. After this I had a strip that was 35 inches long. I know it sounds a bit long but I promise you it's not. And after all this is done you're going to have your bodice, two sleeves and your strip. That's all you need for this DIY. Now to work on the bodice I'm just opening her up. I decided to seam rip both sides because I wanted to end up with three pieces and I wanted to preserve as much fabric as possible. I just used my seam ripper and after about an hour I had three pieces of fabric. You can definitely cut it off. It's all a matter of what you're okay with. And now to work on the sleeves, just to make them easier to attach to my top, I decided to perfectly align them to the best of my ability, marked three inches from the top. One inch on the side and I decided to join the two points the straight line using my ruler after that was done I just cut off that triangular bit and I had two sleeves that looked something like this now it's time to open up your cute sleeves that way you can easily attach them to your top and I'm just going to cut from the bottom of that triangular bit you cut off and use a ruler. You can just freehand this, it's totally up to you. And after you open it up, you're going to have something that looks like this. You're going to do the exact same thing with the other sleeve, that way you have two identical sleeves. After that is done, you're going to have two sleeves that look something like this. As you can see, they are identical in shape. And now it's time to attach them to the bodice. So you remember we have three pieces now. We have the back bit and two front bits. So this is the back bit and we're going to attach the sleeve to the back bit with the right sides kissing. So just make sure you align the straight edge of the sleeve to the straight edge of the back bit and just pin this and sew it. And that's all you need to do for this part. So all I'm doing now is I'm putting in pins just to make it easier for me to sew. 
so a straight stitch straight down oh my god that's such a tongue twister and that's all you need to do repeat the same for the other side that way you have both sleeves beautifully attached to your back bit moving on to the sewing machine I used a straight stitch for this since this is not stretchy fabric I use the straight stitch but if you're working with stretchy fabric please use a zigzag stitch because it allows for stretch or a stretch stitch in case your machine has one of those so now after that is done as you can see the sleeves are attached to the back bit and now it's time to attach the sleeve bit to the front part I know it sounds complicated but I promise you it's not so with the right side facing up I'm going to attach the right side of the front bit to the right side of the sleeve so as you can see the wrong side of the front bit is facing me and all I'm doing is I'm pinning the edge and I'm going to do a straight stitch straight down and I will have my sleeve attached to the front bit. Repeat the same for the other side and make sure you're aligning the right sides together. That way you don't sew the wrong side to the right side because your top is just going to look wonky and weird unless your fabric looks the same on both sides. In that case, feel free to do whatever you want. So all I'm doing is I'm pinning. Again, this makes sewing much easier and after you've sewn everything, your sleeves will now be attached to the front bit of your shirt. I'm just using a straight stitch for this and taking my sweet time, taking out the pins as I go and sewing as straight as I possibly could. Make sure you use your seam guide. It really helps you sew in a straight line for all those who ask me how I'm able to sew in a straight line. Once that is done, you're going to have something that looks like this. And as you can see, once you fold it in, it's starting to look like a top somewhat. So it's coming together. And this is the part I love about DIYs. Just seeing your projects coming to life is the best thing ever. So as you can see, we kind of have enough shoulder top going on. And now we need to make it beautiful. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the button placket. The button placket was very bulky and I did not want it in my final project hence why I decided to get rid of it but you can keep it in case that's what you prefer and now it's time to sew up the sides that way our top is nice and shut so this was a very complicated seam to sew as you can see I am pinning straight down on the bodice and straight down on the sleeve edge and you're going to sew in sort of a V shape and oh my goodness this was really difficult to do right I had to do it several times so make sure you do pin the fabric in place very very nicely that way when it comes to sewing you can easily sew this down so as you can see I'm sewing a straight line down my bodice and then I'm going to lift my presser foot and turn my fabric all the way around that way I can sew down the other side I actually started to the sleeve and then moved on to the bodice sorry I didn't start to the bodice so you're just going to do a straight line down turn your fabric as you saw me do and just do a straight stitch down this will make it so much easier to sew your stitch I promise you and even after all this mine did not look perfect the bottom edge actually ended up misaligning and it just looked funny under the armpit but I decided since I was gonna put elastic in this I could get away with a few mistakes it did not have to be perfect moving on to the other packet that had the buttons I decided to get rid of that too because I just did not want this being bulky on me and now all I'm doing is I'm folding this in half that way I can pin down the bottom edge I wanted to have the key hole about six inches long so I just pinned the rest of the fabric and as you can see my gap was six inches and I just sewed the bottom shut and once you do that you're going to have sort of a V shape at the top and this is what will make your keyhole element so now we're going to make sure we hem her so that she looks nice and neat and I just did a rolled hem folding in my fabric twice I just decided I'd pin this down and sew it down just to make sure my top looked nice and clean after you've pinned everything down you're just going to repeat on the other side and as you can see you have a V shape and that was going to go to my sewing machine and have a straight stitch sewn straight down now moving on to the bottom bit we are going to be adding elastic so all I did is I made sure that I was making a casing that fit my elastic and folded over my fabric just to make sure everything looked nice and neat so as you can see I'm rolling the fabric once before folding it up this way my fabric won't fray and everything will look nice and finished and even after some time it's not going to come undone so I'm going to do this all the way around my shirt to make a casing for my elastic 
so take your time with this the double rolling at the bottom before you fold your fabric really does help with making sure your fabric doesn't fray so I do advise you take your time with this and don't be in a rush it's fine it's going to look fabulous at the end so take all the time you need once everything is nice and pinned, make sure to leave a gap. I usually put my pins straight where I need to leave the gap and slant all the other pins. That way I don't sew my gap shut because that's quite annoying. And now I'm going to do the same thing for the arms. I'm going to make a casing for the elastic. The elastic I was going to be using on the arms is much thinner. So I made my casing much thinner and I'm doing the exact same thing. Folding in my fabric once at the bottom and then rolling it up just to make sure I make the proper casing and just spin all the way around. After everything was nice and pinned, I'm now going to sew a straight stitch all around the arms, all around the bottom of the fabric. Make sure you leave your gap for your elastic, that way you don't have to undo anything to put in your elastic. And now to start off the sewing, I'm just going to double hem the top bit just to make my cute V shape at the top. As you can see, sewing it down just makes it look so clean and polished, which is something I really like. And now I'm going to sew the casing for the elastic. Using a straight stitch, I just sewed all the way around my shirt. I also made sure to leave my gap. That way I could easily insert my elastic once the time to do so came around. So as you can see, with straight pins, it just makes you remember your gap. And this is what my casing looks like. And I just repeated the same process on the armholes. And this is what that ended up looking like. After that was done, as you can see, we have three beautiful casings for our elastic and now it's time to insert the elastic. So I just measured a bit of elastic around my waist and with that length, I cut off that bit of elastic and this is the length of elastic I used in my casing. So I just inserted a safety pin on both ends, pinned one end to my shirt, pinned the other end to the elastic bit, that way it wouldn't disappear in my casing and I just passed this all the way around. I also got rid of the pins because we no longer needed them as the gap had been left we were now good to go and now all I'm going to do is pass my elastic through my casing took my sweet time with this there was no rush I love doing DIY projects because I get to relax so much it just calms me sewing and everything I don't know if anyone else feels the same way but that's what sewing does for me and I love it anyway back to putting the elastic through the casing as you can see I'm just slowly guiding the safety pin through my my casing and once it came out the other side I just made sure to pull at her I removed one safety pins because two safety pins is just too much to work with I put both elastic ends onto one safety pin and shushed out my elastic you have to shush it out that way the entire elastic disappears into your casing and this top actually ends up fitting you and not looking too tight also make sure the elastic isn't twisted within the casing and once that is nice and done I got rid of my safety pin but then I put it back in because I wasn't ready to sew this but all you're going to do is you're going to join the two ends together and then put the elastic back in the casing and seal the gap shut so I did the same thing for both armholes I inserted the elastic using safety pins and once that was done we had three bits of elastic one at the bottom and two at the armholes and as you can see the top is really coming together now for the last and final bit it's time to make a casing at the top for the elastic at the top and I'm just doing the same exact thing we did at the bottom I'm folding in the fabric a bit at the top and then folding it in again just to make sure I make a beautiful casing again this is to make sure your fabric doesn't fray fraying just makes your projects last way shorter than you need them to I do advise you do this step I know it's a bit time consuming and it's not as easy as just folding over the fabric break but I promise you it's going to be worth it once everything was nice and pinned I'm just going to sew a straight stitch all the way around my top I'm not going to leave a gap this time because we will have gaps at the end you will see the gaps once everything is sewn down so you don't need to leave a gap with this just sew a straight stitch all around and you're good to go Once everything is nice and sewn, 
this is what the casing at the top is going to look like and when you look at the ends you will see that there's a tiny hole and this is where you're going to insert your elastic through so remember that strip of fabric we cut off the one that was about 1.5 inches we're now going to make a piece of string with it and all I'm doing is I'm double folding the side so I'm just folding in one side and the other side and then when they meet in the middle I'm going to fold it again once more to make a string bit and this is what we're going to attach to our elastic to make everything look nice and professional so all I'm doing is I'm sewing a straight stitch down the length of my string and my piece of string was about 35 inches I'm sure I mentioned that at the beginning of the video and just sew a straight stitch to join everything together Once this is done, as you can see, you will have a beautiful string and this is what is going to go at the end of your elastic, that way you don't have ugly elastic peeking out. So all I'm doing now is finishing off both ends and I'm just folding in the fabric and sewing a straight stitch across and this just finishes off the ends beautifully and it doesn't look messy. this bit of string in half because we were going to attach it to both ends of the elastic as you're about to see me do and you're going to have two pieces of string each about 35 divided by 2 that many inches that's going to be the length of your string and now I'm going to measure a piece of elastic around my shoulders I'm going to attach the bit of string to both ends of the elastic that way we have an elastic that has string on both ends So you're going to repeat this on the other side as well and you're going to have your elastic attached to your bit of string and once that is done you're going to have one long bit of string with elastic in the middle and this is what's going to go in your casing taking your string and your top you're going to attach a safety pin to one end of the string and you're just going to push this through your casing take as much time as you need this is really easy to do it's a final step to your beautiful top so you're almost done and I promise you you're going to love it so just take all the time and push the elastic through as much as you need to and you're going to push this all the way through until none of the elastic is being seen you want the bit of string to be left hanging you don't want any bit of elastic showing so just make sure you push it through until it disappears within the casing Once my safety pin came out the other side, I really had to shush out this fabric because my elastic was just being problematic and not coming through my casing. So this did take quite a bit of time, but once it came out, everything was just easy. So just take your time with this. There's no rush. So as you can see, the elastic is going to beautifully disappear into the casing and you're going to do this until both ends of the elastic are within the casing. done you're going to be left with a bit of string hanging and what you're going to do is you're going to sew a straight stitch down where I'm pinning this is to make sure the elastic doesn't move about that way the top fits beautifully over your shoulders and this will also keep the elastic in place and the string in place and everything will just look nice and put together so as you can see I'm making sure the elastic isn't showing and then pinning down that bit of fabric after that's pinned you're just going to sew a straight stitch where the pins were and you are done with your top as you can see that's what it looks like when you turn it the right way out and how beautiful is this I really love how this turned out as you can see the tie detail is actually full ties because you have elastic bit in the casing which I think is pretty cool and I think this turned out fabulous and it's a perfect top for summer it's going to take a bit of time to make this but i promise you it's going to be worth it because she's going to look so cute and you can make this in summery bright colors and you're going to be rocking and slaying the summer anyway that's all i have for you guys today thank you so much for watching i want to know if you're going to be trying this i promise you it's going to take some time but it's going to be super worth it because you're going to have the cutest top ever having said that i hope i catch you guys on my next upload until then I love you guys so much and see you next time. Bye guys